So in this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you all how to complete Latina's questline and the rewards you get from it. I'll also be showing and reviewing plenty of other goodies you can get while going through this questline. However, with these other goodies that I'll be showing you, you don't have to technically do Latina's questline to get these. They'll just be crossing our path while going through it. And to top it off, I'll be showing two cheeses that you can do to defeat Commander Nile easily. Which this guy typically is a difficult fight. But with these tactics that I'll be showing you that you can do, he won't be a challenge at all. Hope you all find this enjoyable and it's a Able to help out in some kind of way but yeah anyways to get this started first things first we're going to be having to go over and talk to albus at the village of albinorix uh, this guy is actually really hidden over here and i mean in general finding the village can be kind of tricky so i'm going to show you all how to get to the village and find and talk to him too starting from the Liernia lakeshore side of grace just because i know this is an easy one to discover starting from here we'll be able to help more players i feel if you already know how to find the village and the side of grace then feel free to skip this walkthrough over me getting over there i'm going to fast forward this though but yeah from the side of grace you just want to follow the cliff side until you see this big mountain off in the distance with a huge opening in it you can see it over the trees at a certain point if you continue following the cliffside. And yeah, actually over inside that mountain, you can find the village. As you can see, you just want to start heading this way when you start seeing that big mountain off in the distance over the trees. But yeah, inside here, if you just head this way and go up this hill over here, a little past this giant crab, this is where you can find the village at. And if you continue heading up the hill, a little past this guy kneeling at the well, you'll be able to find a site of grace, too. So be sure to grab that. Now, how you find Albus from this site of grace at the village is by going up this hill. And over here behind this building, a little past this enemy that will appear out of nowhere, um, you'll find a giant pot. And if you destroy this pot, it'll reveal Albus. And here's what happens when we discover him and talk to him. Please, no, dear me. <laughs> I haven't a clue. No secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. That's what he says when we first discover him. Let's go ahead and continue talking to him. Wait, then. You're not one of them. Well, what a relief. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I am Albus, an Albinoric, as you can see. We're finished. The whole village is finished. The curse mongers have destroyed everything. No one that remains has their wits about them. I beg you. Would you look after this medallion? You must keep it out of the Cursemonger's hands. And if you should meet the young Albinorek Latena, then please give it to her. A chosen land awaits us, Albinorex. The medallion is the key that leads to the city. It's only a quaint treasure for we who cannot make the journey. But for dear Latena, it is needed to fulfill her purpose. So yeah, he'll give us the right half of the Hallig Tree secret medallion, and he lets us know what it's used for, which it's used as the key to get into the chosen land of the Albinorix. We'll just need the other half of the medallion to complete the key. And there is right now a glitch to be able to bypass getting the other medallion, which I'll be showing you how to do that glitch in this video. I'll also be showing you how to get the medallion legitly too just in case the glitch gets patched eventually or if you just want to do it legitly anyways if you continue to talk to him here's what happens my legs will soon fade and with them my life alas this is the immovable fate of all albinorex <laughs> So yeah, those were Albus's final words. After he says that, he'll just fall over and disappear. Anyways, after you receive part of this medallion from him, if you return back to the round table hold, this guy, Insha, will invade you and start attacking you. 
And if you defeat him, you'll get the Clinging Bone, unique weapon. The skill on this weapon is called Lifesteal Fist. The description for it reads, as you can see, skill that demonstrates mastery of the art of controlling vital energies. A slow controlled punch with an energy infused fist that renders foes unconscious and steals their HP only effective against foes of human build. So yeah, you get this from him. And if you go to where he was outside of Gideon's room, you will find his armor set too, which is the Royal Remains. And what's unique about this armor set, besides just its looks, is that it will slowly replenish your HP when your HP is reduced, as you can see. So yeah, it will heal you over time slowly but surely. But anyways, also after receiving half of the medallion from Albus, we'll have to go and talk to Latina. This is actually the only way we can begin her quest line. She won't trust us enough if we haven't spoken and received half of this medallion from Albus. Which Latina will be located through the lakeside crystal cave at the slumbering wolf shack. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to exactly get to her. Starting from an easy side of grace once again to discover. I'm gonna be starting here at the Laskular Ruins and showing you where to go from here to find her and talk to her. That way everyone that's watching this will be able to get over here, no problem. But yeah, from the ruined side of grace, if you head over to this island where there's some enemies at, it's not too far once you pass the last yellow ruins. This is a good landmarking to know that you're nearby the cave because from this island, you can find the lakeside crystal cave straight this way. But yeah, once you get in here, you'll find the side of grace pretty early. And a little further from the side of grace, you just want to make your way down here. Watch your step, though. You don't want to fall to your death. And yeah, once you're down here, you'll encounter some enemies. And a past these enemies will be a tunnel system that you'll have to head down. And once you reach the end of this tunnel system, you'll have to jump down again. Uh, once again, watch your step. You don't want to fall to your death or just lose a lot of health. Because a little further up is where we're going to be fighting a boss here and to be real with y'all the boss isn't too difficult so don't worry too much about having to take this guy on in here anyways once you do manage to defeat the bloodhound knight you will receive this medallion that raises your maximum fp so yeah this is definitely beneficial and also the way has opened up now to latina which she's located right outside of this cave right here this is the slumbering wolf's shack location the side of grace is right behind latina in the shack but yeah, here's what happens if you go to talk to her after you have spoken to Albus and gotten a piece of the Hallowed Tree Secret Medallion. I told the all-hearing brute already that I possess no such medallion. Or have you come to take more from me? Was my other half not enough? Oh. Do you speak true? So old Albus entrusted his medallion to you. <sighs> then I have no choice but to trust that this was his dying will. Let's try again. I'm Latena, an Albanoric, the same as old Albus. My apologies for my coarse words earlier. I presume the worst, seeing that you're another tarnished like that all-hearing brute. I hope that you will forgive me. Hmm. The medallion's better off in your hands anyway. Would you consider doing me a great service? I must go back. There is something I must do, even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Lobo. Will you show me the way? To the land of Mikola's Halig Tree. If you accept, I would gladly apprise you of the whereabouts of the medallions of the half. So yeah, that's what she'll say. And she'll also want to join us on going to the land of Mikola's Halig Tree, which is required in order to complete her quest line. So let's go ahead and choose this option here that says, hear her request. Thank you kindly. They say the other half of the medallion is beyond the forbidden lands north of the earth tree, in Castle Sol, on the mountain tops of the giants, accessible by the grand lift of Rold. After doing that, she'll let us know the whereabouts of the other medallion in order to access the chosen land of the Abernorix that Albus was talking to us about. Anyways, if you speak to her one last time after she tells us the whereabouts of the other medallion, here's what will happen. Then I suppose it's time. Farewell, Lobo. My faithful wolf. My better half. I will go with the tarnished, so that our journey will not have been in vain. Forgive me, Lobo.
Call upon me when needed, and I will fight at your side. Alright, so now we are able to summon Latina, which is how she'll be joining us. Next, we'll have to make our way over to the mountaintops of the giants, and that's located way up here on the map. Yeah, this can take a while to get to this point in the game. You'll have to get through Lindale and defeat the boss up at the Elden Throne here. And then at the side of Grace here, Melina will pop up and give you the rolled medallion that's needed to activate the Grand Lith rolled. So yeah, you'll have to progress that far, which I have a detailed guide over how to get to the mountaintops of the giants. If you are needing some help getting up here, the link to the video guide will be in the description. But yeah, once you have made your way up here to the mountaintops of the giants, at the moment, there are two ways I know of that you can take. One being the regular way by defeating Commander Nile up at Castle Soul. The other way is a glitch that allows you to skip to the area that the complete Halig Tree Medallion takes us. I'll go ahead and show how to do the glitch first since it's the fastest way to get to the ending of her questline. So starting from the ancient Snow Valley Ruins here, which is a site of grace we can find after Zamra Ruins. It's a pretty early one you can discover up here. But yeah, from this, we'll just have to head this way and then head down this hill. And then at the bottom, just go left and then keep heading straight here for a while. A little past these enemies is a cliff we can jump from to skip getting the other half of the medallion and fighting Commander Nile at Castle Soul. Now this first jump that I do here, I actually fail and I wanted to keep this in just to show an example of how you could be failing this when you do attempt it. Um, it seemed I kept failing this glitch to bypass this area when I kept hitting the rocks here at the bottom. I just respawned back at the ancient Snow Valley Ruins site of Grace and I went to go do it again and the same thing happened. I figured out that every time I was hitting these rocks down here on the side of the cliff it would just take me back to the ancient Snow Valley Ruins. And how I actually got the glitch to work, I was starting to get worried. I thought it was patched or something already. Um, but how I actually got it to work was just by going down here and jumping away from those rocks that I was hitting on the cliff. That way I'm able to free fall all the way down to the Consecrate Snowfield without getting stopped by rocks that are higher up. As you can see, my character did freeze in midair for a little bit too before actually dying. But once he did die, I was able to choose to respawn at the stake of Marika at the Consecrated Snowfield. So yeah, be sure to choose that option and not the last site of grace you visited. Or you'll respawn at the ancient Snow Valley Ruins, if that's the site of grace you started from too. But anyways, if you get the glitch to work, this is where you'll spawn at over here. You'll spawn pretty close to where you have to go next. Once you're here, you'll have to go over here to the Apostate Derelict, which I'll be getting into this after I show you how to take the regular way and defeat Commander Nile easily. Feel free to skip all of this if you don't want to see how to get over here the regular way and just want to see the ending of this quest line. I'm just showing this just in case this shortcut glitch gets patched in the future. That way everyone can still be able to follow this video guide and get through the quest line. But uh, yeah, anyways, to get over here regularly, we're going to have to complete the Halig Tree Secret Medallion. And in order to do that, we're going to have to go over here to Castle Soul. And at this place, you'll eventually come across the boss, Commander Nile. He's located in this section of the castle. A little past the area where we fight him will be where we can find the other half of the medallion. As you can see, it'll be located right up here. Now, I will say, Commander Nile can be really difficult to defeat. A way to easily defeat this guy is by using the bewitching branches on his soldiers. Using these will turn his soldiers against him, and that will take out a lot of his health. Eventually, these soldiers will disappear when he gets into his next phase, and when he's at this phase, he should be almost dead. You're just going to have to try dodging his attacks as much as possible and continue trying to deal damage to him at the same time. It may take a few tries to get down his pattern of how he attacks and whatnot. But another way that you can easily defeat this guy, if that way doesn't work out, is by using the bow cheese on him. This is a way that you can beat him without taking any damage whatsoever. All you have to do is from the side of grace here that's near his fight, the Church of the Eclipse, just head out this way and go up this ladder and then head over to these barrels and try to sneak past this group of enemies right here. I mean, you can choose to fight 
this group of enemies if you want but it definitely saves a hassle just sneaking past them it is possible but yeah when you get up here you just want to jump on the wall which you're able to just by going up these steps a little bit and, and then jumping over to here honestly this is the hardest part about the cheese you may fall off your first few times doing this but yeah when you're on this uh but yeah when you're up here on this just take your time over to here and this is where you'll be able to cheese them at you will be able to see commander nile through this little opening and you'll be able to also shoot him with your bow too as you can see this is an extremely easy way to defeat him just make sure you have both hands on your bow and you're able to zoom in with it to shoot him with arrows it doesn't really matter what arrows you use i was using regular and serpent ones to take him out so yeah there you have it everyone two easy ways to defeat commander nile You'll get a hundred and eight thousand runes for defeating them, as well as the veteran's prosthesis. This is a fist weapon, as you can see. Here's the stats on it. It will require 15 strength and 12 dexterity to use, and it will come with a unique skill that you can do with it too. As you can see, it's called Storm Kick. And the description for this skill reads: Thrust the prosthetic leg blade into the ground, creating a storm. Follow up with a strong attack to perform a lightning-infused jumping attack. So yeah, this weapon is pretty cool. I haven't really dabbled around with it too much. I don't really rock a build to be using these kind of weapons. But from what I played with it, it was pretty fun to use. Anyway, so that's what you'll get. And you'll also gain access to where you'll have to go to get the other half of the medallion too. Once you officially have both pieces, you'll just have to head over to the Grand Lift of Rolled. And instead of choosing to hoist the regular medallion, as you can see, you can choose to switch action now and hoist the secret medallion. So yeah, once you hoist that medallion, you'll arrive at this place and from here to get out to the consecrated snowfield to get to where we need to go, you'll just have to head this way and the hidden path to the halid tree will pop up on the screen. And a little further up will be a door that we can open up. After opening up this door from here, you'll just have to take a left and head up these stairs and there will be a few enemies that you'll encounter when heading up these stairs. And when you get to the top, be cautious because right before you take these stairs up, this giant blob thing will drop out of nowhere and it will attack you. But yeah, anyways, up these stairs, you just have to head right. And right up here will be a side of grace that you can grab. And a little further past this side of grace will lead to the exit to the consecrated snowfield. So yeah, when you get to this side of the mountaintops of the giants, you'll now have to head over to the apostate derelict, which is located right over here. And I will say when you start to get close to this place, there will be tons of giant magic blasts falling all around you. Definitely watch out for those. You may get taken out heading over here. They can do some serious damage if they hit you. I recommend just trying to grab the side of grace over here as fast as possible. I mean, look what happened to me as soon as I discovered this side of grace. Bam, got blasted. But at least I got the side of grace so I could just spawn up here. And when I did, I didn't have to worry about any blast, thankfully. Which is nice, because this next part, we're going to have to summon Latina, and we're going to get some dialogue here. This is actually the finale of her quest line. We're going to have to summon her over here next to this giant lady. Also, there's this silver mirror shield that we could pick up right where we summon her at. And this shield overall is actually really nice. It has great magic defense. So if you're looking for something to help against magic, this is something to keep in mind to use. And the description on it is actually really interesting. It states, Shield of Radiant Silver, festooned with amber and carried by Loretta, Knight of the Halig Tree. The shape is said to imitate that of a sacred drop of dew, which inspired the absurd rumor that Loretta herself was an Avernoric. So, yeah, pretty interesting. We get a little bit more lore over Loretta. Anyways, here's what happens when you summon Latina next to this lady. O oh, young yet towering sister of ours, let the birthing drop in and create life for us, for all the Albanorix. Thank you. I finally fulfilled my purpose. Our young yet towering sister will give us hope. Now that nothing is left unfinished, I will join you in battle to the bitter end. And when the fighting is done, then you may lay me to rest. Beside Lobo, my dear wolf. So yeah, that's what Latina will say, and this will be the end of her questline. Really found this one enjoyable. It was a pretty neat experience 
going through all of this and helping out Latina. And also here at the end, we received the Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone, which these allow you to reinforce special armaments to plus 10. And these are really rare to get your hands on. So be sure to choose wisely on whatever you're reinforcing to plus 10. Whatever you do choose though, will for sure be powerful. But yeah, I guess I'll start wrapping up this comprehensive walkthrough over Latina's quest line. Hopefully this is able to help you out in some kind of way. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.